I'm going to pick up where I left off last week. Um, kind of. Last week I talked about run and not be weary. Amen? Because uh, according to this verse in Jeremiah 12, 5, it said, if you've run with the footmen and they've wearied you, how will you contend with horses? In 2020, um, we have picked up the pace. I say we, but it's not, it's not like we do anything as far as we just get orders from headquarters, amen? And every prophet worth his salt is all saying the same things. That, that's how you know it's God. I mean, God's not schizophrenic. He doesn't say to the Baptist, hey, it's okay. Then say to the Methodist, you're not doing well. He, I mean, he says the same thing to all of us, amen? Hallelujah. And what he's saying is that, that time is short. He's coming back soon. How many of y'all want him to come back? Oh, I'm kind of getting used to this world. I just kind of like. Man, if you're getting used to this world, you need to get saved. Because this world sucks. It does, folks. It is not a, it's not a happy place. People are not nice and kind. People are mean. People are confused. People are irritable. I have a list. And they're just not fun to be around. I'm looking for, I'm looking for Jesus to come back and straighten this out. Well, you Christians, I tell you, well, we'd be better off when you, if y'all weren't here. Hey, your prayer's going to get answered. <laughs> when people try to do that to me, I just flip it. Y'all think y'all know everything. Not really. I wish y'all weren't here. Hey, I'm in agreement. <laughs> My prayer's going to be answered soon. We're going to be gone. Well, I am. I don't know about some of y'all like, where are you going? I... Uh, Anybody ever heard of the rapture? Anybody ever heard of Jesus coming back, you know, because uh, his children don't need to go be taken to the woodshed because we, we repented? Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, so let me talk this morning. I actually want to talk about walking with God. Last week I talked about running and not being weary. Today I want to talk about walking with God. That's the ultimate. You want to walk with him. You ever notice when people walk, they can talk? You don't find runners out there. How's it going? Yeah, pretty good. Man. No, they just because <laughs> when you're running, you got to pay attention. You can't be looking at the person. You know, if you're walking and you miss a step and you fall down, it's called falling down. If you're running and you trip and you fall, it could be depending on how fast you're running. It could be it could be painful. You ever notice little kids don't look where they're going? I mean, when they first start learning how to walk, you're like, hey, mom, you just look at the person and you, you don't, you haven't, it hasn't clicked that I need to look where I'm going. That's why coffee tables and sharp objects and stuff, when you have little ones, you gotta, you gotta move some stuff around. Otherwise, they're gonna, well, well, look at this thing, you know, uh, you know. You can't sit there and say, didn't you see the coffee table? No, because they were looking at you. You said, come here, and they're going to, and they just start running to you. They're looking at you. But see, that's because they're just learning how this whole thing works. Amen? But see, when people run, I mean, they're running for exercise, and they're running to burn calories, and they're into it. Some of them got music on, but they're paying attention where they're going. We're in a season right now, we need to be paying attention where we're going. Yeah, this is, a, this is a focused time. But I also want to tell you that the good news is, how many of in this room we have different people in different seasons? We're not all in the same season. I'm in a different season than some of y'all. You're our leader. We're all in the same season. I'm telling you what season to be in, but I, I think I'm in a different season than some of y'all. I'm in the season of rest. I guess it's just me too, not an amen in the house. Rest? Well, I, you said run and not be weary. Well, I've been running for almost for 47 years. I believe there's a time where you can 
See, when you enter into rest, you're, it doesn't mean you pull off the side, you don't do anything. It's not a rest stop like those you have on the side of the road. You're still doing the things of God, but you're finding it, you're actually getting more done with less work. You ever work around a seasoned carpenter or a seasoned mechanic? You know, they can do the same thing you're trying to do, but they seem to, they seem to do it effortlessly. You know, you ever been around somebody that paints for a living? And then one time my son was going to help me paint and he was, he probably had stuck the brush maybe two or the roller two or three times and he had more mess. It was going to take me longer to clean up what he had already made. And he had, hadn't even hit the wall a couple times. And it was like, see, this is when wisdom kicked in. It's like, I got this. I got this. Yeah, you, thanks. Now yeah, you go on. I, I, I'll do it. It's no, is your dad all mine helping? I do. I mind. <laughs> I, I appreciate your wanting to. I appreciate your, you know, wanting to bond and all that stuff kick in. But if you help me anymore, I'm going to be here for four or five hours cleaning up all the paint that you're getting everywhere. And I, I, can, I can paint this room in an hour and be done, cleaned up, and then we'll go chunk the football or something. Sometimes you have to know. Some people are anointed to paint, and some people aren't. I said, some people are anointed to paint, some people aren't. It can't be that hard. I was getting some downloads. That's why it took me a while to get out here. Um, you just can't tell Jesus, hey, I got to go busy. He's like, well, I, and you need to tell him what I'm telling you. <laughs> so you don't tell him to shut up. The last thing he told me before I came out here was, um, you know, for a time when we ought to. I mean, we're, some of us are still reading. Uh, do you read a book on how to ride a bike or do you get out on a bike and you, you, you ride it? You get out and do it. Just do it. I love that sign. Yeah, is that some kind of Nike advertisement? No, it's got a scripture, 1 Corinthians. It talks about everybody runs a race, not everybody wins. How many of y'all want to win? Oh, I just want to, I just want to get in the pearly gates. I don't care. You know, I just want to get in. I, I want to get close. I want to live in Jesus' neighborhood. Amen? Hey, you know, heaven's a gated community, right? <laughs> it's got 12 gates. It's a... You that have a problem with gated communities, God's got one. Hallelujah. But, all right. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's get into this. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, but, says, but those who wait on the Lord. That word wait means, in the Hebrew, it means to, to braid or twist God is putting something in you. Amen? He's, those that wait upon the Lord as God is infusing strength and revelation and know-how. Man, I wish I knew how to do the things of God. Wait on him, he'll tell you. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. You never notice when you first get saved, you just kind of, yeah, hey, this is awesome, man. Whoa, look. Ooh, that was my sin. Ooh, let's get away from there. <laughs> and you just kind of, everything was an adventure. You're flying. Did anybody, that's my conversion. How, how, what was yours like? Well, I just kind of, kind of tried to, tried to ease up on the sin and. <laughs> Ease up on the sinning, that was not conversion. That was temporary conviction. When you really convert and you really you realize that the sinning was killing you. And you want to get away from it. Not keep doing it. But when I when I first got saved, I'm telling you, I took off. You you it says you'll fly. Woohoo, you mount up with wings of eagles, you fly. Now, here's the problem. Here's where we lose a lot of people, from that flying to the landing. You know, in 747, when it lands, it, as soon as it touches down, it doesn't stop. Because everything in the, in the, would go out the nose of the plane. 
it does, if you've ever watched planes land, you see that little smoke because it's, they're going pretty fast. And then they're, er, and I hit the wheels hit and then they, everything in the plane, the brakes come on, the thrust goes the other way. They got the wing bent flat. Amen. They're trying to slow this big bad bird down. And then seemingly in a, in a few minutes, that eases up, and then you just kind of go over there, and you park, and you get a, hello. You fly. You get up there. God takes, gives you a bird's eye view of what, where you were. How many of y'all got revelation of what a mess you were after you got saved? When you were, sa when you were in darkness, you didn't see how dark it was until somebody turned on the light. Hello. Well, it says you, you mount up the wings of the eagles, you fly. You know, some people, they're always trying to get back to the hype. At some point, you land. And then, but, you know, you're still running. And then at, after, after you run for a while, then, it, then eventually you walk with God. I'm going to show you in the scriptures, people who walk with God, that we're special people. Not everybody's walking with him. This is quiet today. <laughs> Focus. Now, now, Joni's in Utah today visiting her family, and she gave specific instructions <laughs> to relay to some of y'all. Um, so, so you need to pay attention. There's going to there's gonna be opportunities in this message where you can say, come on! <laughs> Pretty <Preach it>, fast. <laughs> You know, Kevin said we should hand out index cards to different families, and your word would be, come on! And somebody would be, preach it, pastor! And others would be, amen! And so, you know, I could just point. <laughs> well, I'm a, I believe you guys are more in tune than that. And, uh, and, and if it's convicting you and you feel like I'm talking to you, then go, oh my! <laughs> <laughs> that means it, it applies to me. Okay. Because you don't, there's a time to amen and there's a time not to. You ever seen one of those ameners? It's like, you are just out of sync because everything you've amen, you don't do any of that. Ever seen a wife and nudge her husband? Excuse me? You just amen. And he's like, that means truly you're agreeing with it. And she's like, I live with you. You haven't done that in 30 years. I don't know why you're being so, amen, brother. So we don't want to, we don't want to sow confusion amongst the, <laughs> amongst the brethren. So it just, sometimes it just fits and you have to go, amen. yeah, or guilty. At least you're acknowledging it. See, if we acknowledge the truth and we do something with it, it changes us. See that you don't read. This is not a book on how to read a how to ride a bike. It's about how to get on the. It's about get on the bike and do it. You know we should not keep asking week after week. Some of y'all want to help out. Some of y'all want to help out. Some of y'all want to help out. We got places, things to. Do. What's he saying? What's he telling? What's this about? You know, because some of y'all gonna get to heaven, you're gonna go. Oh man, should have been a greeter. <laughs> Should have joined up and started cleaning the church. Should have, man, I should have got involved because I just got my, my tax return from heaven. I got my W-2 from God. That's nah, not as what I thought it was. You know, we're all getting those little pieces of paper in the mail that says, hey, this is your W-2. This is what you, yeah, hello. And that's so your Uncle Sam can figure out how much of that he gets. Yeah. Well, see, God has, God has W-2s, too. He's, he's like, here, this is everything you sowed. And you're going, all right, we're, let's bring it. He goes, here it is. That's a couple pretty rocks. Yeah. You can go get with Tracy and paint them if you want, but there they are. <laughs> there they are. I wouldn't place them anywhere. This is it. You better hang on to these. Anybody ever seen that, that video I told you to go watch on YouTube? Uh the beam of judgment. See, that was a homework assignment. Some of y'all some of y'all went, yes, that was very convicting, very good. And some went, yeah, I don't know. I I heard you say that. In fact, you said it several times, still hasn't got through. Still not doing it. I come here, Pastor, Sunday morning. 
you're blessed. <laughs> Enjoy it. But when I, got, when I leave these doors, that's my time. I just want you to know when you get to heaven, I want that W-2 to reflect labor. Not in, it's not a W-2 of intention. I intend to do a lot of things. For, so we all have good intentions. Well, come on, Joni. We all have, we all have, I, I was planning, as soon as I got my business going, I got my 401k happening, as soon as I had my portfolio where I thought it should be, that's a step off there, as soon as I got everything in, then, I, then I'm going to do something for you. There's a story in the Bible about that guy. My barns are full, I've had to tear down, build big, bigger barns, woohoo, and then, uh, then he died. That's a story. That's a whole story. Jesus told that story one time. Yeah, he had all this stuff, and then he died. And they're going, whoa, 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 did he die? Yeah. And all that stuff he had laid up, when he got to heaven, his W-2 was not. I want you guys, when you stand before the Lord, him going, oh, bring them in, boys. Beep, beep, beep. I want trucks. Trucks. Pull it in. And ready to un un unload on you blessing, eternal blessing. This is temporary. It feels like it's forever. It's very temporal. I don't know about, you all keep noticing people keep dying. Somebody famous says, oh, Kirk Douglas, 103. Man, about time. Yeah, come on, Kirk. Come on, borrow time, buddy. <laughs> Yeah, that was Spartacus, you know. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> That's probably why you lived that long. Okay. 103. Wow. Hey, for somebody in Hollywood to get that old, that's amazing. How many Hollywood people die off pretty, pretty young sometimes? Hallelujah. All right, let's get into this. We want to walk with God. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24, there's only a few verses about this guy named Enoch. Just a few verses, but he's remembered. He lived 165 years. He had a son named Methuselah who lived longer than that. He was the oldest running guy around. It Didn't Methuselah live a long time? Yeah, he did. Okay, it says that Enoch walked with God 365 years. Verse 24 says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. What does that mean? He, he didn't die. One day he's walking on down the street and God goes, I can't whistle like that. And he was gone. God took him. He didn't fall over and die. He just got raptured. You can't go find Enoch's funeral or tombstone. It don't, it doesn't, it's not one. He just took off. Well, you can't just take off. Well, I plan on doing it some here in the near future. I hope I'm leading somebody to Jesus when the rapture takes place. I hope we just get through praying in Jesus' name. Poof, we're on the clouds. I want that guy to go, whoa! <laughs> Man, your prayers avail much! I want him to have one of those moments. Yeah, that's fast-acting prayer right there, buddy. Hallelujah. Uh, you just got in, buddy. That's by the skin of your teeth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, it says you walk with God. Now, I'll tell you something. When you walk with people, you fellowship people. I see people, I, have, I have some neighbors at the end of the street. They walk their dog every evening. I know because my dog runs to the fence and they... <laughs> Let he, that's dog language for this is my turf. I know, but I'm getting close to your turf. Oh, you better not try. And it just, once it's a little dog, so he has a lot of bark, and my dog could take him. I know he could. It's really important that we know stuff like that. It's just a little lap dog, man. My dog could devour that thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm still in the fifth grade. <laughs> I still measure things by who can take who. It's sad that there's actually people that are grown men that their first thought when things don't go their way. I had a guy in my office come to me one time and he was wanted to, had a word from the Lord. He wanted to prophesy to me. And I, I know this guy and I said, I said, nah, I don't really want to receive. 
anything from the Lord from you because um, you're just not that. Um, you're not, I have people in my life that God speaks through. If he wants to get a hold of me, he'll use those guys. And this guy went, no, I've got a word for you. I'm going to give it to you. I went, no, you need to leave. And he wouldn't leave. So I kind of went over there and kind of took him by the shoulder and said, yeah, you need to leave. He went, come on, man, come on right now. I was like, really? And that's what I said to him. We're in the fifth grade. This is what we do. How many of y'all, he didn't have a word from the Lord for me? <laughs> well, he might have, brother. No, if, that, if, if your first response is, I'm going to deck you, that's not from the Lord. I ended up having to call the police on the guy. Hello? Why? Because he would not respond to spiritual authority. So you have to, there's another authority on the earth. It's called civil authority. So I had to call the police and I, you know, he did leave. And then I called the cops and said, I had a guy in my office threaten me. You didn't. Yeah. You're a narc. Yes, sir. You called the man. I did. <laughs> I'm going after some rebels in the house. Man, I thought you were cool. I am. But see, Bible says if, if we, if we don't reap what we sow, we keep sowing it. I mean, you know, this man needed to reap that. Well, the police went, I told him where he worked, told him where he lived, just works down the street now. Cops went over there and said, look, if you go back over to Church Ramona, and you walk back in here and you give that pastor a hard time, you will go to jail. You know what? He's not been here since. I'm going to tell you something. I got better things to do than look out for people that are crazy. Amen? So... Some of y'all that still have problem with the police. <laughs> Man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I was saying amen out of there, babe. <laughs> but we still, you know, we still have that. The Bible says that the police are for our benefit. They're for the instruction of righteousness. When you're on the right side, they don't, it shouldn't freak you out anymore. There was a time in my life when I saw cops, I was like, good. Everybody act, we used to term, act straight. <laughs> Remember that term, act straight. Now that's been since changed. That means, all right, don't be gay. <laughs> I keep messing with our words. Come on. Oh, all right, everybody, everybody look straight. <laughs> Oh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Aren't you glad you have a peace that passes all understanding? Amen. That paranoia is not part of it? Amen. That it's legal? Yeah. One other, another thing I love about this peace, it's free. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, I appreciate the peace of God. All right, let's keep going. So Enoch walked with God. 365 years, man. That's a long time to walk with God. And then he just was gone one day. One day God said, come on home. Man, I love you so much. I want to hang out with you. I wrote my, I wrote down here, when in, uh, here's in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it makes reference to Enoch. It says, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death, and, uh, and he was not found because God took him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That's his testimony. He pleased God. He made God happy. I wrote here, does God like hanging out with you? Now, before you automatically say, well, yes, I'm the apple of his eye. I'm da, 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 ba, ba, zip, zip, me, 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 myself, and I. Before we start quoting all the great scriptures and how much, and God does love everybody. Just because he loves you don't mean he wants to hang out with you. I, want, I know because I have the spirit of God in me, and I get around some people, and I don't want to hang out with them. I'm going to I'm give you, some of you are going to be like, what? That's not the God I serve, brother. Da, da, da. Before you get your shield of faith up and start defending the faith, I'm on your side. I can prove it in Scripture. The Bible says God resists the proud, gives grace to the humble. If God is resisting you, guess what? He ain't necessarily wanting to hang out with you. Because he's resisting you. You ever been around people that are full of pride? And you get around them and everything in you just keeps wanting to get away? 
And some of y'all have had to fight that. What's wrong with me? I'm trying my best to befriend this person. And every time I get around them, I feel like I need to leave. Well, that's God in you, the Spirit of God in you, resisting the pride that's in them. And the more they talk, the less you want to hear. Because if you listen to them, wow, that's wonderful. Wow, you're so wise. Wow. See, that just feeds that pride. And that's a, that's a fire that God wants to put out. Yeah. Amen? So some of y'all are going, well, that explains. Now, don't turn to your wife or husband. I can't hang out with you anymore. <laughs> Pastor Mike, just show me why I resist you. You're full of pride. Well, you're in a covenant and you need to work through that one. <laughs> Speaking of working through it, on, uh, that's what I was to say. I'm making a little, we had, a, we had a class last night at my house, and I tell you what, it was very profitable. Yeah. It was. Some of y'all going, man, I wish, I wish y'all had some kind of class for married people. Uh, we do. It's called fireside. So we're, when the weather permits, we're actually going to sit out by this. I built a really cool fire ring and stuff, but it's been too cold because my fire ring is not I wanted a smokeless, you know, when you sit and you could make, I can make a hot fire. My wife knows I know how to build a fire. My kids will say, you know, dad don't build fires. He builds bonfires. Indians say, man, white men built big fires sit far away. Indian built little fires sit close. <laughs> well, I'm a white man, so I build big fires. And <laughs> How's it going over there? <laughs> you know, because I like fire. I'm a keeper of the flame. That's what we're called to do. The Bible talks, talks about being sons of thunder, being on fire. Woo uh, so when I get around the natural, I like to gas it up. We got enough wood to last us all night. Now who's running the fire? Brother Mike. No, about, let's go get more wood. <laughs> and that's a true story. All right. So we have this thing on my, uh, every other Saturday. Well, it's for you. We're going to actually start having them every Saturday because we're getting more and more couples wanting to sign up for this, which is a good thing. You know, you, you wives, when your husband wants to go and learn how to be a better husband, that should make you feel pretty good. Amen? Wives, when, you're, when your husband's going, and you're going to go with me, right? Yeah, we're going to learn how to, do, how to make this thing work. Well, I've been married 20 years. I don't need that. Yes, you do. You know, you can have 20 years, you can have one year of growth repeated 19 more years. That's not, you're not, we've been married 20 years. <laughs> Some people say, yeah, we've been married 20 years. It's all in how you say it. <laughs> 20 long, enduring years. But they're supposed to be glorious. He that finds a wife finds a good thing, obtains favor with the Lord. Man, you got somebody that's going through this journey with you, that's a helpmate, that's encouraging you to stay on the path and get at, not somebody controlling and telling you, rah, rah, rah. this is, we're here in truth. Truth will set you free. It's awesome. Hallelujah. Well, you'll see, you'll notice, uh, we're not going to advertise this and every week and say, please come, please come, because you know, I've learned a long time ago, whomsoever will, let him come. Whomsoever will. You got a will to do this. You know, we can browbeat you and, and get up here and make you, make you feel guilty or whatever. I don't want you coming out of guilt. I want you coming out of love. Say, I love this woman. I, I'm enjoying the journey. I want to enjoy the journey. And if, it can get, if there's ways to make it better, I'm all bored about better. Amen? So, anyways, we, we, uh, every, sun, every Saturday, I'm from 6 to 8. I got people coming to my house, and we're sitting, when the weather permits, we've had a few outside. But we're going to sit around the campfire, and we're just going to talk about marriage and how to make it better. We don't, what's the curriculum? What book are you using? Uh, well, we're using one book we found that's got a lot of information in it. And it's really whatever the Holy Spirit wants to do. Amen. And it's all voluntary. Nobody's being put on the spot. So, Frank, Alice, how's your sex life? Ah. None of your business. Taken. <laughs> we don't go there. It's not about stuff like that. It's about real life. Hello? I want to tell you something. If, if it ain't happening outside the bedroom, it ain't happening in the bedroom. That was an opportunity right there to amen. 
I figured every woman in the house would went, amen, brother. Well, I did hear a lot of amen in the spirit. <laughs> yes. I mean, intimacy is not about getting crazy in the bedroom. Intimacy is about, man, knowing this person and having this wonderful journey, finishing each other's sentence, saying things at the same time. It gets kind of crazy after a while. <laughs> uh, moaning and groaning. She's praying for you in the nighttime, brother. He's interceding for you. <laughs> it says with groanings that cannot be uttered. I don't understand a word you're saying. Yeah, but I'm praying for you, baby. You never pray for me. Every night I pray for you. According to you, I keep you up all night with my prayers. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So he walked with God. Does God like hanging out with you? The answer hopefully should be yes. Because do you like hanging out with people that are always finding fault with you? Brother Mike, I really like hanging out with you. But, you know, this whole bishop thing where you want to correct and bring, you know, I'm not into that. As long as you tell me I'm wonderful, I'm awesome, I'm losing weight, regardless of what you see, just, just, just you know, are you, are you getting thinner? Yes. You know, just as long as you're telling me what I want to hear, we'll get along just fine. Well, anybody ever been in a marriage like that? I was once in a marriage like that. I want to tell you something, that's not reality. If I could only tell Brenda positive things and encouraging, <laughs> yeah, then that's not real. Sometimes there's things in our life that aren't positive, aren't encouraging. Sometimes we're doing things that are flat out discouraging to people, and somebody needs to say, hey, you need to quit that. How about murmuring and complaining is, that's a fast track to get you in trouble with God quick. If not God, the devil. The Bible says if you murmur and complain, you'll be destroyed by the destroyer. Well, God's not, God's not the destroyer. Satan is. And we don't need to do anything to get him opening the door and messing with us. Hallelujah. So, does God like hanging out with you? Yes. He does if, if you're edified. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When you get born again, when you got born again, it was a mess. But boy, how do you is cute. My wife showed me a baby this morning somebody just had a couple days ago, a friend of ours. Cutest little thing. Thank God babies are cute. Because that's all they got going for them. That's it. Some of them have, some babies have a cry that just, you going to do this every time <laughs> to get my attention? I'm going to come on, come on, I'm coming and running quick because that is annoying. I mean, some of them have just terrible cries. Some of them fight you. We got, I remember Brenda, my daughter's got a, got a, a baby. That, well, he's not a baby anymore. But when you go to change his diaper, it's, it's on. <laughs> I mean, you got, it almost takes two people to change this poor little fellow's. It's like, we're doing you a favor here. <laughs> Do you see what's in your bridges? Are you okay with that? Because we're not. <laughs> The dog won't even play with you right now. He, he came up, sniffed, and ran. But you go to change him, and it's work. It's for your benefit. Now, see, when you're a baby, we have grace for that. How many you know when God's changing our diapers when we're older and we're fighting them, there's a problem. Some of you are going, oh, Brother Mike, I'm not a babe. I'm an adult. You may be an adult in the natural, but in the spiritual, the Bible calls us babies. For a time when you ought to. I like to think for a time when you ought to be able to go to the bathroom without somebody changing your diaper. I mean, it's not, it's not cute when you're 15 and you go to your mom, Mom, I'm going to change my diaper. Nah. To me, I look at that going, the visual on that is just not right. Yeah, because there's something wrong. Something is wrong if somebody, for a time when they ought to be doing things for themselves, somebody still has to do it for them. See, that's why we, you know, why we get here on Sunday morning is to hear the truth. You know what the truth will do? It sets you free. Another way of being free is you'll grow you up. 
I don't like boundaries. I love boundaries. You know what I like, what I like about boundaries? It makes you safe. Boundaries are the safe place. Amen? How I many of all want to be in the safe place? Yeah. I do. I like that dogs, that little dog can't get in my yard. Not that it would be anything, because my dog can, you know, can take it. <laughs> that dog come through the fence, you're going to regret that. Well, actually, it's a boy. His name's Buddy. Yeah, you think, Buddy, you come through that fence. You'll be glad that chain link is between you and Kyla. I'd like boundaries. You know, the fact that you got here safe means you were on your side of the road. Some of y'all travel a great distance to get here. Thank God for boundaries. It breeds security. Makes you feel safe. You know, but for a time when we ought to be in our boundaries, some of us still getting out of them. We need to stay in our boundaries. The Bible says the lines have fallen in pleasant places. <laughs> They're pleasant. They're pleasant places. Okay. All right. So does God like hanging out with you? Yeah. You should be able to say yes or, well, most, at least give me a percentage. Most of the time. 60-40. Uh, 70-30. 80-20. Yeah, that's good. Hallelujah. All right. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7 says, By faith... Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen, moved with godly fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his household. Now, this walk with God, this is what I want you to hear. That was wisdom right there. Why do you do that? Well, because you don't want to hear this. Oh, my ears pop. Hey, y'all look a lot better. Well, that's good. <laughs> All right. Here's the thing about walking with God, folks. Sometimes the consistency and staying with it, sometimes it's not always. <whistles> Noah, warned by God, you got to build an ark. And he's like, okay, what's an ark? You know, when you look at the dimension of this thing, you can go see one that's pretty much built to scale in Kentucky. It's like, a, it's like an aircraft carrier made out of wood. It's huge. And it took him decades to build. Sometimes you think this guy is getting a house built down the street, whatever. You know, they built one behind my house. It seemed like it's taken forever. Last night, we actually saw people moving around there last night. I hope that's the new people that own the house. <laughs> but um, it's taken them forever to get in there. Here's a guy working on a project a decade, another decade, at least 80-something years he worked on it. That's a long time to be working on a boat. And the crazy thing is, there's no trailer to haul this boat to the lake. There is no lake. And he's building something that you can't hide. So all the neighbors are like, what are you building? An ark. What's an ark? That's what I said. <laughs> well, that's a big boat that's going to hold stuff. Okay. What kind of stuff? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I'm building this. Well, here's the plan. Here's Larry, his, his neighbor, Larry. Larry, God told me he's going to flood the world because it's just so wicked. He's, he's, he's up to here with it. He's got to, do, he's got to judge the world. He's, he's, his grace has run out. But I found grace in my family, and he's told us to build this ark. Man, you've been building it for years. I know, I know. He probably could tell you the, the date. <laughs> 765,400. <laughs> he knows. But he's got this thing, and guess what? He's doing the will of God, but guess what? He's being persecuted in the process. He's being mocked. He's being made fun of. He stands out. You can't hide an ark. 
There's no tarp big enough to cover his ark. So all the neighbors in town, and there's write-ups in the Ramona Sentinel. Noah's building an ark. I mean, and if that wasn't bad enough that he had to deal with this ridicule decade after decade, folks, how many know there was opportunity to get weary in well-doing? When God gave him the dimensions, that would have, for most of us, what? Because they were huge. Now, are these inches? Is some kind of, is this a metric system you're throwing out here? That's not, <laughs> no, he's like, no, this is how many cubits. But it's like, oh my gosh, God, this is huge. And he picked a time in history where power tools had not yet been discovered. So he's having to use man-made tools to make this ark. It's a mass undertaking. But you know what? His whole purpose was to save his household. Is your children and wife worth saving? Well, that... Breaker 1-9, Joni, you are missed. <laughs> yes. I don't know about you, when I get to heaven, I'm not looking for streets of gold and Starbucks and all that stuff. I'm looking for my family first, my kids. Yeah. I want to make sure they made it. Some of you going, well, you know, hey, who knows the heart of man? Oh, yeah, it does. You know, there's people that go to church that ain't going to make the rapture. Going to church don't make you saved. I came from the South, and I, I love out here in California. You know why? There's no traditions. There's basically heathens out here. <laughs> I mean it. They're heathens. Granola eating, dope smoking heathens. <laughs> they're lost. They know they're lost. Sage burning, patchouli smelling. I got a list. <laughs> You know, that's, the, you know, they, they're lost. There's no tradition. There's no, you know, they just know they're lost. You know what? I find that lost people make good Christians. Go figure. I think that's even in the Bible. But see, I preach for years in the South where everybody goes to church on Sunday because it's what you do. And see, people that are in the bars on Saturday night and then church Sunday morning, they think they're okay because they're in church on Sunday morning. And this is what you get when you say, hey, are you a Christian? No, I'm Baptist. Well, that's cool. That's the denomination you're connected with. But are you a Christian? I'll go to First Baptist, Mike Hall. You just better mind your P's and Q's. So it's First Baptist, not just so. We're letting you know that we're not just Baptist. We first. We're number one. And I ran into that all the time, people. Then I moved out here in 1985, and I found lost people by the buckets fulls. They were everywhere. You know what? Lost people make good Christians. I found the Jesus fish for the lost. He said, I didn't come to save those, to reach out to those that were healthy. I came to look for the sick. So I've enjoyed preaching out here for, for like 30-something years. It's been wonderful. Hallelujah. But here's something. Do you want, is your family worth saving? Do you want, when you get to heaven, do you want to, are you making an ark of safety? Husbands, dads, are you an ark? Do your children look at you and see the blueprint of God? Do you live a life that your kids go, I'm going to follow this example. Paul said, follow me and you'll end up in heaven. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Well, I think Christ is in heaven, isn't he? Follow me. He didn't say, follow the teachings of Jesus. He said, follow me as I follow Christ. Can you tell people to follow your example and that will lead them to Jesus? Or are we, are we doing, the, are we doing what, what Jesus said? He said, do what the scribes and Pharisees say, but don't do what they do. So you, our, our life, our actions have to line up with our mouth. Well, Noah, this guy, Noah walked with God, it says. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Noah was a just man. Perfect. That word perfect means blameless, having integrity. 
How many know integrity is a big deal with God? It is a big deal with God. How about character? Yeah, I want to, I'd rather have the gifts of the Spirit than character. Well, I'm going to tell you something. If you have the gifts of the Spirit and you don't have character, enjoy them. They're going to last about a week. Because if you don't have the character, those gifts won't stick around. Because you your well, lack of character will take you out of the race before those gifts are really doing their thing. We've seen lots of people in the body of Christ operating gifts and then and holding revivals and God's using them seemingly for a season and then because they lack character, phew, they're out of the race. Okay. Uh, and then it goes, says, he was, had integrity in his generation. Noah walked with God. There it is again. Noah walked with God. That means he had fellowship with God. I wrote, men who walk with God are, are men of prayer. Because what do you think they're doing when they're walking? They're talking. Brent and I go for walks. You know what we do when we walk? We're talking. Not when we're running, when we're walking. People that go for walks end up talking. Look at that over there. Isn't that pretty? Wow, that's beautiful. You see things you don't see when you're running. That's way true. But see, Noah walked with God. He was in fellowship with God. He was getting downloads for this boat he was building. He didn't have something he could, well, I'm going to copy Harold's boat down the street. It's an ark too. No, <laughs> there was the first one ever built. He needed, he had to be in constant fellowship with God about this thing. God's telling him about certain, and when you build this thing here, it's for elephants. And he's like, what's an elephant? Now, you know that's true, people. Not, how many of you know animals just aren't everywhere? There are certain parts of the world that certain animals hang up, hang out. You know, there's stuff on Madagascar that ain't nowhere else. There's some weird stuff over on that place. You know, that means the Bible says that God called the animals and he just drew them to Noah's backyard. Can you imagine when a polar bear shows up in your backyard? Ain't seen, many, ain't seen a lot of polar bears in, in, over in, in the Middle East. That's because they hang out in the polars. They're bears that hang out in the polars, thus polar bear. But there were animals showing up, and now the neighbors are really giving them a hard time. What the heck is this menagerie you got going on in your backyard? What is that long neck thing with the weird patches all over it? That is the weirdest looking animal. I, he's like, I think it's called a giraffe. I'm still getting emails from heaven on this. I don't know what half these things are. What are these lizards that can look different directions at the same time? I mean, come on, people. Insects. Weird insects start showing up. Aren't you glad bugs are little? Because most of them I've seen are not that, they're not that cute. When I was a kid, scary movies were just basically insects made larger. <laughs> they were. They came from, and they were just ants blown up. Ah! But what about one day these big old stick bugs? They got the bugs that are huge. Just started showing up. Hey, I'm supposed to get on some boat around here. <laughs> There's all these animals. Weird stuff showing up. Then it's then his wife's going, oh, they're going to have a field day in the paper with this. Every time I go to Costco, there she is. You know, brrr, they're just mocking her. Everywhere. You know that's going on, people. Everywhere they went, they got persecuted for obeying God. I mean, we're in our generation. We're going to get persecuted for obeying God. Every generation had a test. Men who walk with God are men of prayer. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says, Men ought always to pray and not faint, quit, turn out badly, cave in. If Noah hadn't prayed, he'd have caved in. If Noah hadn't kept talking to God, you think, talk about getting weary and well-doing. Then he, then he said, hey, God, how are we going to feed these things? Oh, that's another thing I want to tell you about. You got to get some food together here. 
I mean, every time, seriously, meditate this. There's not, God will sometimes drop a few scriptures there and then says, well, you know, just use your imagination. And so, now, I realize some of you are going, what's that? Yeah, I know. That's why God uses guys like me to help you. <laughs> just imagine this was your assignment. And then when he got on the boat, he was there almost 140-something days on the boat. It only rained 40 days and 40 nights. It didn't, didn't quit raining. They pulled out the dock and off the... They had to sit on that boat for a hundred and something days. I don't know if there was Dramamine back in those days, but that's a long boat ride, isn't it? Do you ever think that he might have got... No, I think God just supernaturally blessed them all. Well, I hope he did. Bible says he did help them out because he made the animals go to sleep. That's something he didn't have to feed, especially those long things with the weird nose. Those things eat ridiculous. So he made animals go to sleep. They went in hibernation so he didn't have to feed them all. But he did, he did have to feed some. I don't know if y'all been to the zoo lately. There's quite a few animals out there. Aren't you glad Noah obeyed God? Because if he hadn't obeyed God, we'd be in trouble, wouldn't it? How many of the zoo would be pretty, pretty sparse? Yeah, and birds and everything else. Birds can't fly forever. So that, that's, that ark was filled with all kinds of stuff. I just see, when I, when I read that story, I just see one word, work. Work. Building it was work. Loading the animals, work. Maintaining the animals, Work. There was no break. You ever wonder what was the first thing Noah did when he got off the ark? It's in the scriptures. What's it say he did, folks? He planted a vineyard and then he got drunk. You know, that takes a while. That was premeditated time one over. You go, well, that wasn't a good response. No, it wasn't. It just tells me he's human. Tells me that all that work got to him. There might have been some resentment, but he was still obedient. Some people, if you can't do it with the right attitude, then don't do it. I'm going to tell you something. Thank God Noah did it. I don't think his attitude stayed right all the time. But I, I put myself in Noah's place. You ever look at some people's assignment and go, man, better you than me. I'm glad I pastor a church in Ramona and not, not in ISIS country. Hello, I like my head. It fits really well on my shoulders. I like it with these two. Hello, I'm not being facetious. Noah had a tough assignment, people. But that was his assignment. Build a boat and save your family. That was basically what he actually saved the human race. That's a plus. Amen? You get over being mad at Adam and Eve and roll it over on, and go back and say, hey, by the way, Noah, appreciate it. Don't get self-righteous. What's this vineyard? What'd you do that for? <laughs> I can hear him saying, you walk, walk, walk. It's 600 and something years in my shoes. Hello? Yeah. All right. He was a praying man, wasn't he? People who walk with God are people who fellowship. God. God's looking for fellowship. He's looking for somebody to talk to. He's looking for somebody to, to spend time with. He's got angels. Well, yeah, he does. And they're created beings and they're awesome. But they don't have a choice. They obey God because they're commanded to. You and I have choice. So when we pick up the phone and call God, and he picks up and goes, hey, I just want to tell you I love you. I'm glad you called. I love you too. How many of that's choice? How many of when your kids call you and say, hey, Dad, I, just want to, I get these text messages randomly from my kids. Hey, Dad, I just want you to know I love you. And I want to tell you something. I never go, whatever. I, it's like, man, those are keepers. I have stuff in my phone saved, things that they've texted where they've shared their heart and just, it's like, well, that's a keeper. 
when I get a new phone, I always make sure, and I make sure everything in my notes can transfer. If it's in the cloud, bring it back down, put it in this phone, because <laughs> I periodically will go there and reference those things, because sometimes you just need to hear them. Amen? Aren't you glad he, he texted you? Wrote it down so you can read these texts at any time you want to? These are text messages from God, people. Some of you are going, I never thought of it that way. That is so enlightening. I'm, I'm on board now because it feels personal. It's always been personal. Who do you think he wrote this for? For the, for the Israelites and us and us. All right. Is this encouraging anybody but me? I'm having a, it's encouraging. Noah had an assignment, and that was his assignment. Some of you are going, you ever notice that we watch TV preachers and all these people doing great things for God, and you're going, I oh, mean, I wish I was a Todd White. Well, you're not. You're you. But that's his assignment. You have one too. And your assignment might not be to walk the streets and pray for everybody and raise the dead and all that kind of stuff. Yours may be just to love your husband and your children. And if, you, if that is God's will for you, and it is, if you do that with excellence, you'll get the same rewards that these other guys get. Quit looking at everybody like they all have capes and they're just like, oh, oh. They have assignments just like you and me. And I don't think Noah looked that cool out there, just sweating. Sometimes just on hot days, he's just in a loincloth and he's just out there. It's like, go for wood. Man, this stuff's hard. <laughs> yeah, because it's got to keep water out. How come it couldn't be made out of pine? No, not pine. has to be gopher wood. <laughs> That's the kind of wood they built with. And then we got to seal the whole thing. We all love working with tar. It's one of our favorite things, isn't it? No, it's no. It's, they had to pitch that thing. Every phase of it was tough. I can see him going through the blueprints. Where does it get eaten? Where's the central heat and air? Where's the ventilation system? A, by the time he put all them animals on board, where in the heck is the vent? We need some vents. See, I, if I read the Bible, I just kind of let my imagination get involved and try to picture this thing. People, it wasn't just everything went peachy. It was a tough assignment, and it was a long one. Long one. Decades. But he was found faithful. People that walk with God stay with it. Stay with it. Well, staying with it's, I'm going to tell you something. That's something my wife will agree with me on this. If I, I have certain things, attributes, and characteristics of the Father. We all do. But one that I have, and I know I have this one, is Tenacity. Shree, I got some bulldog in me, don't I? What does that, what does that mean? It means when I bite something, I don't let go until I, you know, I just don't let go. I just stay with it. I bet people are trying to beat me, <laughs> let go. <laughs> I just, I don't let go. You stay with it. When? Till the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's why I'm a little excited about when I talk about his return, because I see it coming soon. And I'm like, hey, this thing's almost over. Woohoo! We get, because I've read the book. I don't know if y'all have read it, but it, it gets way better at the end. It gets, like, it's ridiculously hard. It, it, but then all of a sudden it gets super cool and super easy. And then it's like, wow, a thousand years of rest and peace. I don't know about you. That's a, that's a, when are you going to retire? Well, like a thousand years. That's a, Pretty much uh, my, re that's, that's my retirement. A thousand years of peace? Oh, my goodness. All right, let me finish this. In Hebrews chapter, here's the key. In Hebrews chapter 4, it talks about, the, it says, The gospel was preached to us as well as unto them, but didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith to those that heard it. And it says, and it's, and it says For we who have believed... Everybody say, duh. That's past tense. Not we that believe, we that have believed. It's established. We've been believing this and believing this. We've, it's a done deal. 
we who have believed do enter that rest. There should come a time in your walk with God where God does not have to prove himself to you over and over and over and over again. You get it. You're God. I don't have to have a sign. I don't, you don't have to multiply the, br the bread in the morning time. You don't have to re-sanctify the, the toast when it gets burned. I don't just push it back down and say, in Jesus' name, come back right. You know, you just scrape it and say, move on. <laughs> Hello? He doesn't have to keep jumping through hoops to prove to you he's God. Man, there, Jesus found a, a, a soldier one time that just said, hey, man, you just got to say the word. My servant may be made whole. Jesus said, I'll go to your house. He said, you don't have to come to my house. In fact, you're not, I'm not worthy to have you even walk in my house. I got, I got soldiers that work for me. I tell one, go here and tell them no, no, to do that. And they do it. They understand authority. He goes, I understand authority. And he goes, Jesus, you have authority. Just speak the word and my servant will be made whole. Jesus freaks out. There's not many places in the Bible where he freaks out. This is one of them. He goes, what? <laughs> he looks at his disciples, his disciples going, oh, I don't know. <laughs> They're like, well, yeah, we don't even do that. And he's like, yeah, I know. And he's like, okay, your servant's made whole. And in that same, the Bible says that self same hour, his servant was made whole. He just had to speak the word. Hallelujah. Man, we don't need to keep making him prove himself. I mean, oh, he's God. And he always will be God. He's God in Mississippi. He's God in Tennessee. God way up in heaven. And he's God all over me. I know that God is God. And he always will be God. I know that God is God. And he always will be God. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was 70s worship, by the way. <laughs> That's how y'all did it in the 70s? Yep. We kind of made it as we went along. And he always will be God. He's God way up in heaven, and he's God all over me. We don't need to have God keep jumping through hoops to prove himself. Let's get, to, this is that entering into rest. This is that saying, you know, God's, he wrote it. He's going to finish it. I found everything that Jesus prophesied would happen before he kept, he said, before he, he comes back, it's happening. So I just read that. Going. He said that would happen. That's happening. He said that would happen. That's happening. And then he said, when, he said, look up when you see all these things begin to happen because your redemption draws nigh. And if he said all that 2,000 years ago and it's all coming to pass, then we ought to get excited and go, he says the next thing to do is look up because we out of here. I don't know, brother Mike. I'll believe it when I see it. Well, I'll tell you what, you'll see it, but you might not be going up. <laughs> Blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection. You know it says that? Blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection. That's the rapture. There's a certain blessing that comes on those people that nobody else gets. How many of y'all want glorified bodies? You know what a glorified body does? It walks through walls. Because after the resurrection, Jesus, the Bible says he entered a room but not through the door. He walked through the wall. He walked on water. He flew back to heaven. Now I don't know about y'all, he had me at fly. <laughs> now during the millennial reign there's going to be lots of people on the earth there's going to be two classes of people the ones that weren't hard headed that made the rapture because they read the book and obeyed it and made the rapture and those that live mossy back kind of hypocritical I'm Baptist <laughs> <laughs> yeah you you're Baptist and you lost and you and you didn't make the rapture because you thought that all this stuff you could do it was uh, it was all covered by grace no matter what I do, I can't be lost, so I'm going to just have fun. I got the best of both worlds. I can go to heaven when I die, and I live like the devil. <laughs> that is not the best of both. Amen? I'm going for the glorified. I'm, amen? I want a body that just supernaturally has supernatural abilities. 
Some of you are going, I just want to get there when I die. I'm not, that sounds like pride. No, that sounds like obedience. I'm going for what he wants. Hallelujah. I want a glorified body. I'm into flying, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I don't know if it says that. Well, you prove me wrong. Search it out. It makes a distinction. Blessed is he that hath part in the first resurrection. There's other resurrections, people. How about the people that get their heads cut off in the book of in the Revelations that are martyrs for the cause of Christ? How about when they're resurrected? Hello? All right. For we who have believed do enter that rest. Yes. Hebrews 5.12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers. I love that verse. Yeah, I know you, you find ways to weave it in lots of sermons. Because I believe there's, there's a time that God has an expectancy for you and me to, to reap where he has sown in us. Tracy, you got a lot of word in you. A lot of word there. And God wants that word to come out and touch other people's lives. Cherie, you got a lot of, you just got a lot of. <laughs> no, I know that you're not working in the public place and there's a part of you that misses it because of the connection to the public. Now you're taking, but now you're discipling grandbabies. Isn't that public ministry so much easier? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's a different season we're in, folks. Things are changing. Things are different. Um, for a time when, for a time, for by this time you ought to be teachers. Isn't it, isn't it good that God don't have to keep telling you that he's God? Keep trying to prove to you that he can do what he says he'll do. Don't, let's, end, let's give our father rest when we just believe what he says. Hallelujah. Second Timothy in closing. Second Timothy chapter one, verse 12. He says, for I know in whom I have believed. There it is again, believed. It's past tense. How many of y'all just get this behind you? You're not believing and trying to keep trying to keep believing that God's God. You're it's past tense. It's like I've, I've I've been believing this. I know in whom I have believed. I've been believing this for almost fifty years, folks. Forty seven years been believing this. I know in whom I have believed, and am persuaded. God don't need to keep trying to persuade you. His son died for you. There's an empty tomb in Jerusalem that proves it. But if that, I don't have to go to the Middle East and go on a, go and walk in that tomb to believe that he's not there. I know he's not there. Hallelujah. I'm persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. That word day is capitalized. It's talking about the day of judgment. I've committed this woman, seven children, 17 grandchildren to the Lord. That's a lot. I've, that's, that's just a personal commitment. And then I got the commitment with, with you guys that, that I'm trying to believe you're going to get there. I will tell you something. When y'all stand before the Lord, I want, to, I want you to bring me into rest. I don't want to be going, come on, Jesus, come on, Jesus, come on, Holy Ghost. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want when you stand before the Lord that I go, in my heart, I go, man, this is going to be good. Jesus looks at you, smiles, and puts his arm around and says, come here. Oh, man, I've longed for this day. Now, good and faithful. Oh, my goodness. I, w I saw you go through those trials, and you, were, you went through with such grace. I'm so proud of you. Oh, come here. Give me some more. Oh. See, that's Jesus I know. Y'all act like he sits on his throne. Next. Come on, Miss Go Dominic. Bam, 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 bam. No, <laughs> he's not that guy. Kiss the ring. Okay, move on. He's not a pope. <laughs> Right. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. He loves you with an everlasting love. And he's looking forward to that day. He's watched you go through all kinds of stuff. He, you have taken on his nemesis, the devil. And he's the devil's good at what he does. And he's watched you at 30, 40, 50 years of age take on something that's eons old and a master at deception. And you fought a good fight and you overcame. 
and he's proud of you. I don't know about you. I'm, one of the highlights, I'm, apart from looking at making sure my family's in heaven, the next biggie I'm looking for is when, the, when split foot, old goat boy gets thrown before the Lord, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess. I'm looking forward to the day when God puts Satan in front of Jesus and he's on his bony knees and he says, Jesus, you are Lord. And all of heaven goes nuts. Oh man, we wave on and thus it can fly. Woo! We doing a, we putting a curl on it. Yeah, come on. And then he's thrown into outer darkness. And that's the end of that. That's the end of that. That's the end. And then a new Jerusalem comes down from heaven, a city made by God and a new earth. Ooh. I don't know. I read this. Y'all act like y'all ain't, it ain't in there. I, I've read it. When I get weary, I read it again. This ain't my home. Just passing through. I'm just a pilgrim passing through. This ain't my home. Hallelujah. I hate the devil. I said, I hate the devil. Well, you don't hate anything, Brother Mike. You're supposed to love everything. I used to sing a song back in the Jesus movement. Satan is a liar, going to burn in a lake of fire. Oh, Satan is a liar, going to burn in a lake of fire. So y'all going, I feel for him. Your Satan is a liar, going to burn in a lake of fire, going to bake in a lake of fire. Come on, wait All them screaming demons, going to burn like crispy critters. Yeah, all them screaming demons. You say, that was y'all's worship? Yeah. <laughs> that was it. God in Mississippi, God in together. Yeah, well, right up on. Oh, we've come so far from that. Yes, we have. But I want to tell you something. I remember once somebody came up to me one time and said, I just don't like that song. I just feel for, the, feel for the demons and the devil when you talk like that. It's like, you don't have a clue who your enemy is. Y'all know Satan hates you? Hates your kids? If he had his way, he'd send them through the windshield of a car this afternoon. And laugh the whole time. Man, he's a dog. Oh, I heard that. I love dogs. Oh, <laughs> he's an enemy. He's an enemy of the cross. He's Jesus' enemy. And Jesus wrote, and I'll tell you what, this is not going to pass away. It's all going to be fulfilled. And it says that he's going to confess he's Lord and he's getting chunked in the lake of fire. And that's the end all all she wrote. <laughs> Satan will never rule and reign in hell. He's not there now. He hasn't been there. He doesn't sit on a throne in hell. He, they don't, he don't rule out of hell, people. That's mythology and all kind of other stuff we've come up with. Makes great scary movies. He's a fallen angel. He's out trying his best to deceive mankind and he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I'll tell you what. He's defeated. And I don't have to wait till Jesus throws him in the lake of fire. He's def Jesus defeated him on the cross. When he said it is finished, it was finished. The Bible says he spoiled principalities and triumphed over them. He beat the crap out of the devil on the cross. So you have to say it that way. Lunch is just in a few minutes. Well, that's what he did, folks. He, he beat the snot out of them. And we need to act like we're sons of the Most High. That, 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 that's our placement. I'm with Jesus. And say, you ain't got nothing on me. I'm with him. I knew a guy who used to be a black belt. He, he, could, he had 19 inch arms. The fact that he looked like a, just a brick wall and he, and he was quick. He wasn't just strong. He was fast. I always felt safe with this guy. It's kind of like, I'm with him. Bring it. He's going to do you in. But so I'm with Jesus. No weapon formed against me is going to prosper. No devil can do that. We just send them packing. Is that a good place to stop? Yes. Putting one on the devil? 
Amen. We're going to fly. We're going to run. We're going to walk. You that, wa you that are walking with me, keep on walking. You that are getting weary, keep on walking. I'm telling you right now, we're almost there. A few, a few more years, folks, we're almost there. I said a few more years, we're almost there. So, all right. You encouraged? Go and sin no more.